What we're going to be looking at now is how we can control the movement using the WSAD keys and left and right arrow keys. Now as of right now, we saw that we can go ahead and run the game and we can control the direction based on the speed value. And what that's doing is essentially when the value is negative, it turns our vector into a negative vector. And when it's positive, it becomes a positive vector. So how can we control this based on a WSAD system? Unity provides us with the input manager. So we can check out the input manager by going to edit, input, where is it? Edit, project settings, input. From here, we have the input manager, which has a bunch of axes. And they give us a bunch of defaults, and you can create your own. Uh, but essentially, what we want to look at here is there is a horizontal and a vertical axis. And I want to go through this with you. Here we have a horizontal axis that is mapped automatically to a negative value, which is our left arrow key, a positive value, which is our right arrow key, and then it has alternate buttons, such as the A for negative and D for positive. Now, <clears throat> what's also important is the axis that's affected with this input. You can see here it says X axis. Now, why is this important? Why am I showing you this? We're gonna use these axes, horizontal and vertical, to map our user input and receive a float value, similar to our speed value. Now let's go ahead and check this out because I know it's a little confusing. I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable up here. I don't want you to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable called public float. We're gonna go ahead and say horizontal input. All right, I'm gonna set it to nothing. And I'm gonna come down here into my update and I'm gonna go ahead and say horizontal input equals the input manager, which is input dot get access. And the access I want to get, you can see here it says string the access name. I want the horizontal access. Now what this is going to return is it's going to return a float value. It's going to be negative one if I hit the left key or the A key, a zero if I'm hitting nothing, or a positive one if I hit the D key or the right arrow key. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to run Unity and we're going to look at this in real time. As you can see here on my player, we have a new variable for horizontal input, which is set to zero. I'm gonna set my speed to zero, so we stop moving. Right now, horizontal input is zero. When I hit and hold the right arrow key, you'll see it's one. And when I stop, it goes back to zero. And when I hit the left key, it goes to negative one. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna incorporate this access into our movement method so that when I hit the right arrow key, we're moving to the right. And when I hit the left arrow key, we're moving to the left. So let's look at how we would interpret that. Here we have our horizontal input, which equals the input dot get access horizontal. I'm going to remove the variable from up here, and I'm going to declare it locally within the method itself by just adding the data type. So float horizontal input is the access of horizontal. And now what we can do, and I'm going to go ahead and place this above our previous code up here. And what we can do now is instead of uh, what we can actually do, we just need to add our horizontal input. So kind of like how we've added real time and how we've added our speed, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to multiply this by our horizontal input. And if I save this and test it out, you'll see now that we're no longer moving. The speed is set to negative one. Let's go ahead and set our speed to about five. And if I hit the D key, I move right. If I hit the left key or the A key, I move to the left. So essentially, we just created our movement system off the horizontal axis. So now as a challenge, what I would like you to do is figure out how to use the W key to go up, the S key to go down, and the up and down arrow keys as well. And let's go ahead and just clean this up a bit before I let you go ahead and do that. I'm going to typically what I recommend doing is I always put time dot delta time, which is what brings us into the real time factor. I always put that at the end just for organization purposes. So here. Alrighty. So what we're doing now is we have our vector three dot right multiplied by our speed based on our input and multiplied by time dot delta time. Now, again, if you want me to cover the math for this, we can go ahead and see here that it's a new vector three. Right, vector three dot right is a new vector three with a one on the x-axis, a zero for y and zero for z. We multiply it by our speed, which is five, 
and then we multiply that by our input, which is, say we're not hitting anything, let's say it's zero, and then we pr pretend that this is what gives us our real time, and that would be a one. So here we go. The math for this, right, would be five times zero, which is zero, and then here, zero times one, this becomes zero if I hit nothing. Now, what if I were to hit the right arrow key? What's the value of horizontal input? It would be a one. So five times one is five, and five times one over here is five. So now we move five units to the right. Set that back to one. What if I hit the left arrow key or the A key? The value is negative one. Five times negative one is negative five, and one times a negative five becomes a negative five, causing us to go to the left, negative five units. So the math is pretty simple on that, and hopefully you get a grasp of how that works. And what I want you guys to do is figure out how to make us go up and down. So here, this is the code for moving left and right. Go ahead and make us move up and down. Go ahead and try it out. And in the challenge review, I'll show you how it's done.